Okay, at 6.30, we'll call the Forceful Town Board Monday meeting to order at 6.30 on October 18, 2021. Roll call, please. Roy Engelbert. Here. Larry Huber. Present. Jason Klahach. Here. Dina Schmidt. Here. I'm Ruth Kircher and Lauren Eaker. Present. Okay. Okay, thank you. Has the been public notice been public published correctly? Yes. Okay, thank you. Uh, agenda is in front of you. Motion be in order to approve the agenda. I make a motion to approve the agenda. I'd second that. Motion made to approve the agenda. Any corrections or changes? Hearing none, all those in favor, please stand by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. The minutes from September 20th. We we're posted on the website. Uh, there were minor corrections, corrections made, yes. but that's also been done to your record. Yes. We talked about that. Yeah. Therefore, I'd make a motion to uh, accept the uh, minutes as posted. I second that. Motion made to accept the minutes as posted. Any discussion? Any? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. All right. Aye. I have a comment to, to make on that. Um, we had talked about not posting the minutes until they were approved. And I think that'd be better because then the changes could be made or corrections could be made. And that it would be the correct mm -hmm. procedure yeah. to post minutes. Either. We were trying to be transparent mm -hmm. as quick as possible, but minutes should not be published until they have been approved by the board. Mm -hmm. And okay. if you notice other institutions, they're always a month late uh, right. when they're right, ready. So. I think we will, like tonight's minutes, will be posted until next after they're approved. After yes, they're approved, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, that's fine. And so, uh, okay. but we do post the video recording. Yes, so people can see what we've talked about. Yeah, sure. They just can't not see the minutes until they have been approved. Have been approved. Right. Okay. okay, that's that's good. Okay. Okay. Moving on then, uh, <laughs> treasurer's financial report. Okay, in the cemetery checking, we have a negative $398.79. It's not negative. I transferred $425, I believe it was, to put in there, um, or $450, but it will not show up until I, tr I tried making the bank download before I came, and it did not show up in there. So, uh, what, what would so, be so it is not actually negative. Oh, it shows 398. Yes. Negative. See how it's negative? Right here. Yeah. Okay. It, it's not. It's not. Not. Okay. But our pay, because it did not come in to our QuickBooks off the bank yet. Okay. It will show negative. Yeah. One check was made out for lawn cutting. Yeah. yeah. And you'll see that in there. Yes. But uh -huh. it's just, it's so. And with that 179, that's not a negative either? Yes. No. It, well, part of it is because we didn't, I did not transfer the money for the highway bill yet. Oh, okay. Oh, we were gonna, okay. That's only, I didn't put that in until it's actually due. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay. So the ten, cemetery perpetual care, we have $10,128.49. Cemetery savings, we have $2,414.51. The town checking, we have a negative $179,406.20. The money market, we have $89,712.46. The LGIP general, we have $175,951. And I transferred everything to the from the from the town savings to the town checking, except for the highway bill. Okay. Okay. So that 96350 is a pretty close number then. It's from the yeah, 98350. Yes. Okay. Oh, and Ruth kind of knows more of that because there's there is two there is some things that were doubled up mm -hmm. in there. Yeah, yeah. So we so there get, might be a little more than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we did talk a little bit just prior uh, about some of these things we did in the past with journal entries. Yes. Is that reflecting, is that causing some of that? I don't know if that's causing some of it. Well, those, maybe not the journal entries. I don't think so. No, I think I, mm -hmm. part of it is just the double the entries. Double entries double for entry. the two, che two checks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because I tried deleting them and they just keep coming back. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to get rid of them. Okay. 
So we're going to turn off the automatic deposit and you will enter them as they arrive. Yes. Okay. I think that will be a lot easier. Well, it will be easier to keep it current. Yes. Yes. Okay. We have any open oh, that was the other problem. So these are both paid, as you see. One was paid in April and one was paid in September. But, but showing up on the agent. Yes, because this invoice needs to somehow attach to the payment, but uh -huh. the payment is, Wonder. it was attached, but I had to unattach it because it was the wrong, because it was the one that I entered in, not the one that the bank came in. Okay. So I had to unattach it, and now I don't know how to get rid of these again. Mm -hmm. Okay, but they're, they're not really outstanding. No, they're not. Okay. Time to call Sue. Um, uh, I really think if we shut the bank off, we will lose. We will have a lot less problems. Right. Well, yeah, that's fine. Good. Given that, I make a motion that we accept the treasurer's report. I second that. Motion made to accept the treasurer's report. Any further discussion? Did we get our October payment for our roads? Did, did we get that? That comes in November. 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 We got one. Okay. Like November fourth or okay. something. Yes. Yes. And shared revenue is also. And shared revenue is also coming. Okay, so we should be good for the rest of the year. Okay. Okay. Public comment and correspondent. Uh, this year is our new time to issue a citation. Those are the traffic. Intakes that the dates when you write your tickets that you have that would be traffic intakes at 3 30. Uh, now, this is not effective till January. January, that's this is effective till January, okay. and it's always subject it's just to traffic dates. Traffic to take to always to take that's a right. look at it. So those are, those are the court dates, the criminal intake, and traffic intake. Yeah, and you always, when you write your tickets, you always have to make sure you get them at least 30 days. Yeah, if not with the old and with the new. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Well, I, yeah. Uh, I do carry that in the vehicle. Yeah. Sabina, so, uh, on uh, last Friday, we met and approved our new wards. This is our new, this is Ward 1. Okay. And this is Ward 2. What happened is that uh, for District 2, Supervisor District 2, they picked up the village of Forceville, and that's 411 people. And so, therefore, our ward two got expanded this way. Okay. And then also, the district three supervisor picked up these little towns in Nassawapi. So, the, the look of the whole county board supervisor district, they're trying to keep the municipalities as compact as possible. In other words, before Nassauwapi had was split into three, now they got a big chunk. Now we've got a big chunk. Okay. And Brussels is the same way. So that's that was our awesome. So we did that too. Okay. The other thing that Ruth that put in the minutes uh, is that our garbage uh, we have a cost of living increase of 0.09% effective October 1st. So our garbage mm -hmm. Per month charge will be sixteen dollars a month. It comes out to fifteen point nine nine two six, so it rounds up to sixteen dollars a month. Okay. So that it'll be uh, forty eight dollars for the last three months. So the total charge, if according to my calculations, get nine months at fifteen eighty five equals one hundred forty two dollars sixty five cents, and three months at sixteen dollars at forty eight dollars. So the total charge that I will be submitting to Christine Mo. Will be $190.65 for a full year of, of uh, garbage. When is that effective? Uh, October 1st is when. In, uh, in oh, okay, yeah, because that's what our contract is. That's correct. One year old. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. correct. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, and I imagine that'll have to be in the month of November sometime. I'll have to get that information to her. Yeah. yeah. She did send me a printout of all the list of all the um, residents. That have garbage collection. So, do but, we have to let the residents know that this is going on? No, no I don't think so. that's why we put it in the minutes. Okay, yeah. I don't think so. 
that's where I put it. She sent me the list that was from last year. She asked if there's any changes. So yeah, there will be changes. Go through the yes. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. There could be changes. Yes. A couple of additions. Just raises a question. Are we going to approve those minutes from our last meeting on last Friday when we did the thing with the uh, wards? Mm -hmm. I don't. Did you write any minutes up? Not yet. No, I didn't. I didn't have a so chance. So, okay. So we. We'll approve them at the next time. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. Just yeah. all of a sudden that just yeah. triggered us. Yeah. I'll have to post it and put in the in the paper too. Yeah. It has to be in there. Right. Yeah. Okay. No problem. That's all the correspondence I have. Ruth, do you have any? Uh, the only thing I got this letter from Jill Lau um, regarding the whiz votes fees. There, she determined uh, an increase will be for 2022. Uh, she said, WizVote workload has dramatically increased over the past few years. Absentee tracking and election entry and balancing has added a tremendous amount of time to the election process. Going forward, fees will be based on number of registered voters. As in past years, the base fee will be charged in, two, in years of two elections. For years with four elections, the fee will be one and a half, the base fee. And the base fee for us would be $450. And that would be in addition to what we've been paying because we have 731 registered voters. Um, I, I know like on a, like, especially the presidential election, there is really a lot of work that they had to do. And mm -hmm. I don't know if that's what triggered this. I, don't know if you want to. I have another letter like that too. So if you want to keep that. So we paid four fifty. That's our our bogey. Isn't that it? would be that would be an increase. Increase mm -hmm. over increase mm -hmm. over what we normally pay. Yes, yes. And that's for software support. And well, I don't know. Think first. I think they had just have so much work in their office. Either that, or she says, if you want to become a self provider, and there's no way that's that's really a lot of work. You'd have to order your ballots and make sure your vote machine well, works. We do that through the town. Um, I mean, through the county. Yes, you could do it through there, but you're the one that'd be responsible. The clerk would be responsible for it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You, you um, at the beginning, yeah, prepare. I don't want to be a self provider. That's a lot of work. Okay. Anything else? That's all that I have. The table. That's a table making a talk to us. I'm not even moving. Yeah, well, there are others at the table beside you. Yeah, well, find it. Okay, I'm moving on to the American Rescue Plan update. Mm, you missed one. I missed, oh, public comments. Public comment. Okay, any public comment? Oh, yeah, I see. Any on that line, Larry? No, they're oh, okay. No, I'm the only other participant. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. What can I say? Okay. No public comment. Here one is going by. It's okay. American Rescue Plan update. Uh, nothing else. We had a ni nice information in the Towns Magazine on our November 18th meeting, Towns Association meeting at the town hall in Sturgeon Bay, which is the, which is the nice of Columbus Club building. It'll be, uh, Ken Pavich will be the presenter and he will be talking about the American Rescue Plan uh, on that. As Ruth, we have until March 31st to make the first report, I believe. The end of April. April, April, April 30th to make the first report on that American Rescue Plan. And when is that meeting, Roy? November 18th at the Sturgeon Bay Town Hall, which is the mm -hmm. Nights of Columbus. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. when, um, when do we have to make the first report on the American Rescue Plan? April of April, next year. April of next, next year. year. And that's predicated on comparisons. Mm -hmm. When we were at the Towns Association mm -hmm. Convention, I sat through that one presentation, mm -hmm. the one where you couldn't get in, mm -hmm, the huge mm -hmm. room, which was overflowing. And they gave us that spreadsheet. That formula, that yes. Uh -huh. yeah. That should be done by the end of the year, I think. Okay. Or as soon as possible. As soon as possible, yeah. yeah. Uh, because there's that lost revenue 
issue is predicated on a 4% gro uh, growth. Mm -hmm. And in reality, we don't have that amount of growth. Mm -hmm. And so therefore the difference between those is what they refer to as lost revenue. Mm -hmm. And so about 50% estimated, about 50% of the funds that we will get, we will be able to use in any manner we so choose. Mm -hmm. that, because we've lost revenue, mm -hmm. so it could be used for whatever. But we need to know that calculation right. and do the projection before we will know for sure. And we do it year by year. We do. Yeah, we do. It's a four, actually five years. Mm -hmm. uh, you take uh, 2019 mm -hmm. and base it on, I think it was 18 or 19's reports. Mm -hmm. 19's report, 20, then 21, 22, 23. And it's got to be done by 24. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So... It, I would like the Towns Association to provide the um, PowerPoint. They presented that thing twice and they never got through the slides. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to be going on the uh, Towns Association website to see if I can find that convention material. Mm -hmm. Because while the discussion and the questions and answers were all excellent, there was not any ability to get all of the information that they had. And I resorted to taking out my phone and I took pictures of slides. Yeah. And there's so much stuff out there that it, it's, it's virtually impossible for you to know uh, the details unless you can go through these slides, you know? Mm -hmm. And these slides will talk about the process. Well, great. You talk about it. First report is due on April 30th, 2022. Mm -hmm. yep. And it covers whatever. But in any case, that will need to, we'll talk more about this down mm -hmm. the road. Yep. Okay. Okay. Anything else on American Rescue Plan? In other words, between now and the end of the year, we have to get that formula and yes. figure that out. We got to figure that yeah. out. Yeah, so we yeah. go. There's that new spreadsheet is a lot easier to work mm -hmm. with. That's what they said. Yeah. And right. if you go to the seventh tab down, you can just go to your prior reports. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. well, they had a demonstration. I might need help with that, but we'll see. Okay. We'll see what happens. Okay, next item on agenda is CJ's Bar and Grill Class B Beer and Liquor License and Bartender License. Uh, Ruth, you have an application then for the Yes, end? I do. Um, uh, John did sign the paper. Okay. And then they asked, do you want a printout of all the, you know, like the felonies on there? But I says, I don't know, you can get that online too, but... Um, the, Papers were all signed where I guess before he wouldn't sign those. How long have you been continuous resident of Wisconsin prior to this date? 48 years? Is that, is that, is that 48? Is that what that means? He must have been here his whole life. Yeah, he must have lived here his whole okay, life. Okay. Yeah. okay. So you got that uh, form filled out for the two mm -hmm. LLC mm -hmm. applicants? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and do they have bartenders? I did get four, but now does, um, what he's got Henry, but is, they call him Joe. Does he need a bartender's license if he's listed in the, as an agent? No, no. I didn't think so, no, but he did, he did uh, fill out the paper. I have four from here somewhere, yeah, four. There's uh, Melissa Nelson. Jennifer Berner, and then Hank Gilson, and then Ryan looks like server, but they did not get me the uh, certificate of bartending. So that I'm waiting for, and he says he'll get that to me. So we could approve that pending I get the certificate. But we need the certificates. We can't approve yeah. those. Oh, okay. Now, the, on that. now is John Grosspire and Henry Joe Gilson in the third. Are they both on the are they both on the application for, for the beverage license application? No, not the operator's license, just Henry. Just Henry. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. So Henry and his immediate family ages 18 or over 
don't require okay. a bargain. I don't think he has any family. Family. Okay. I know that John does. His his um, daughter is a waitress there, but I don't think she tends a bar. But these three would. And uh, and so, and my question is: Would John need a bartender's license since he's listed on this application? Is he listed as an agent? No, he's listed as president member. Of the LLC? Yes. Mm -hmm. But it's only agent. The a name agent, agent is, is Joel. They said whoever give, we, we can give we can give a license to both these people will both be eligible for the license. So my right. understanding is that John doesn't need a bartender's license neither. That's my understanding. Right. That's what I thought too. Yeah. Right. Because uh -huh. yeah. he's the owner and operator. You're right, right. Or whatever the no. The uh, John's question. The owner operator. Yes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. What um, I guess not. And the law was changed about four years ago that license can be issued to people who have been convicted of a felon, providing that the felon that they were convicted, the crime that they were convicted of doesn't work is it uh, something subject to what they're business, going in business mm -hmm, for mm -hmm. so uh, we're in in good standing to issue this license to these individuals now and the next question is do they have a contract are they where are they going to operate do they have a contract with this place of business? i didn't get it from tim yet i talked to tim and he was going to send it to me so they did he has an agreement with mm -hmm, these individuals yes. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, i see it says cj's bar and grill yes and I see a sign on the establishment is Johnny G's. And it, yeah, it's it sketchy. <laughs> but it still also has see, he's the okay. former, uh, you know, post old post pub and steakhouse sign. Right. They're all up there. All three signs or two mm -hmm. signs are up there. Right. And there's, and we know Lockwood owns the facility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Do do we have do we have uh, anything from Tim? From Tim, not Tim yet. Lockwood? No, he said he has the lease agreement, and he was going to get. Who has it? Tim. He was going to send that to me. He had it all written up by a lawyer. Yeah. Tim Lockwood did. Yes. Oh, um, Lockhart. Yeah. He's probably waiting for the lawyer mm -hmm. to finish it up and get it back to him. Mm -hmm. So I guess we got two questions here. We don't have a lease agreement. And we're questioning the CJ's Bar and Grill. Well, I don't know what the name of the place is. And we see Johnny G's outside. So what is the name of this organization? I He's got <laughs> CJ's Bar and Grill is how he wants to be. I'm sure that's what their license is under. Mm -hmm. the that's limited, probably what yeah. they, mm -hmm. they go under, mm -hmm. but Johnny, call it Johnny G's. Johnny you, can, G's you, can, you, can, you can call it yourself. Sure. Establishing anything. Yeah. It doesn't have to. It, right. License is one thing. Yes. And the name we put on the outside can be anything else. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Not Very confusing. <laughs> Not confusing, but uh, okay. So the uh, this has been published. It has been published. Because right they, right could, yes. they could have it doing business as Johnny G's mm -hmm. or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Sure yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It has been published in here. See confirmation and so the fee has been paid yes and so the only thing and you have verification from tim lockwood that he has a signed okay. lease no well he's going to be sending it to me but you you have mm -hmm. phone verification that he has a signed lease yes okay uh -huh. so we know they got a the lawyer's drawing it up how can it be signed well I, oh, he, he was having that done a while ago yeah. i'm oh, assuming okay. he has it yeah yeah, yeah. 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 this is before they opened it, it. Mm -hmm. yeah right. mm -hmm. So we can approve this tonight, and that's the only documentation we need is a copy of that lease so that they're doing business legitimately. I think that's all we needed. But you also said you do not have evidence of the bartender. Yes, the certification. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we have to. We can't prove bartender. We can license. wait. We can wait with that. I think. Yeah, we can. We yes. can't prove bartender mm -hmm. license. No, no. This is just the establishments. License. license right right mm -hmm. original alcohol beverage retail license application right mm -hmm. okay they're already in business what would, what would, <laughs> well, what, we what know would that. another month be so you would have well, well i understand that 
Well, they're operating on, they're operating, they're operating under, under Tim Lockers. Right so yeah, somebody operate. else is. Uh, well, okay, so okay, they're well, somebody else wants to up another month. Yeah, know, some, approve the whole. Yeah, he some, wants it as soon as possible. Work. Somebody yeah. else is, uh, he's, Tim Lockwood is, is the responsible party right now. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, and that, uh, that's so, that would be not liking that if I were in business, but that's her decision. Yeah. But we can approve the license for John Grossbeyer and Henry Gilson doing business as CJ's Bar and Grill. Pending the lease agreement, you think? Should I wait till I get that lease agreement though? Pending the lease agreement. Okay. Pending the lease agreement. We can vote on that. And the minute you get the lease agreement, then you can send them the liquor's okay. license. Is that a form of a motion? Yes. That would be in form of a motion. Let's see. Class B beer. Beer. I, beer. I move that move that motion for that pending release agreement. That's the only documentation we need. So that's because we got we have both of the, the statements from the jury questionnaire. And that was what we were waiting for. I'll second that. All right. Yeah. And that's the only thing we're voting on right at this time. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. And then we'll take up the, the, the fee for the bartender's license at a later time. And, uh, and, uh, and they're that they pass the exam. Anything on any facial species today? Um, the Samantha Coyne reached out to me about a support letter for a uh, going for a surface water grant uh, for the county. Um, so we put that together. She did a good portion of the drafting on it. She did a really fine job of that. And um, so the letter went out and hoping that we're going to receive some grant money. Okay. So. But are they done spring for a year? Or? Uh, no, the spring is still going though. Okay. There's still some some miscellaneous areas. I know some of the big highway areas were done, um, but it's fall, so yeah, it's now the time to get it. So, so we haven't gotten the bill for what they did here. So, no, no that's it. Okay. And Samantha will be an attorney. Right? I know. Um, Jason said he was in the county meeting to give us an update, but no. Not here. Okay. So that, so. <laughs> okay. Any report from the sanitary district? No. Nothing. Nothing from the sanitary district. Do you just get any of do you just get any of the meeting? You get what you get the minutes. Oh, you do. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. So, so say they send it with the bills. That's mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. you don't yeah. feel like a brand new. Okay. And uh, anything from the cemetery? We're planning to do a cleanup tentatively on the 27th. 27, 10, 27? Yeah, clean up and mark the alleys and uh, corners. When will the corn come off, you know, do you think? They're working on it. That shell corn is shell up corn. there? You're, you're yeah, shell, yeah, we're done chopping. It's shell corn. No, but, when, but, but when will the shell corn come off? Are they working on it now? They're working on oh, it. Oh, no, that's yeah. what you meant. Yeah, okay. yeah. They're, I mean, they're, I don't know where exactly they are, but they're okay. working on okay. taking corn off. I would because the minute, the notice minute that, is, because you're the only person. minute that's done, I'll just sure. take my tractor and cut the grass there. Okay. On the edge, you mean? On the edge, yeah. Yeah, we're going to try and cut down that. There's a volunteer trees that are showing up on some of the grave sites. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that. Yeah, get it, those got to get off there. Yeah. And that cottonwood, uh, you know, stump is sprouting yeah. like mad wood trimming back as well. Yeah. So I just a matter of my getting a schedule okay. together with the other two. Uh, I brought this up, uh, the, the state code retention policy. The state has their own code of retention policy. And we have an ordinance. We work pretty hard on that retention policy. If we want to follow the state retention policy, all we have to do is to uh, enter a new ordinance and uh, that we're going on record to record per the state retention policy. Okay, do we get an update from the state as to when they make changes to that? I didn't get anything, no. No, so how do we know then? Yeah, I understand. It's, it's a, they publish a book is what they publish. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So we would just have to review what we're doing 
uh, or what records we have to maintain once a year when they send out that mm -hmm. retention book. We followed the states pretty closely. We did. When yeah. we when we adopted yeah, that, yeah. we followed the retention yeah. schedule the state was mm -hmm. using at the time, mm -hmm. but that's subject to change. Mm -hmm. So I guess my recommendation would be that we just drop a, a resolution or an ordinance, whatever's in order, yeah. to say we're going to just adopt that and we won't have our own. That's right. That's right. I think right. it only makes it more difficult for us to try to keep up with what they're saying. That's right. 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 Yeah. Okay. We'll bring that up. Bring that next month, November. Okay. Would that be an ordinance? It'd be an ordinance. Yeah. It'd be an ordinance. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be an ordinance. We could, could talk about that. Okay. And that brings us to. Appointment of the Southern Door, appointed director to the Southern Door Fire Board to represent the town of Forceville. Mr. Lauren Eaker's term is expired. <laughs> well, how can you give us a report? <laughs> <laughs> First, you got to invite me, then I'll uh, I make a motion we appoint you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I second. I second to appoint Lauren Eaker to another two year term as the director representing the town of Forceville to the Southern Door Fire Department. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, please signify saying aye. Aye. Let's hear the report. Motion carried. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lord, what's the report? <laughs> you better sign your, your oath of office here. First. Oh, yeah, you got to get sworn in before you go. Okay. You've been appointed to the office of Southern Door Fire Department Director. You have not entered upon the duties. Do you? Affirm that you will support the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the state of Wisconsin and will faithfully discharge the duties of your office to the best of your ability. So I'll help you, Dad. I do. Oh, you got it. Oh. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I have to sign this too. You can take that in the long run. Okay, you're all set. All righty, so our last meeting was October 13th at the North Station. First item on business was we seated the new director, Steve Melville, from the town of Maslapa, who they had recently appointed to replace J.C. Roeder. We seated him as director. Second order of business was the election of officers and president. To put it <laughs> point, point. <laughs> by majority vote, I was elected. I was elected president. Good. Vice president now is is uh, Pat Olson. Pat Olson, um, returning secretary Dave Miller, and returning treasurer Chuck Schley. So next thing, treasurer's report. I have five different categories here. In our checking account, the treasurer reported $15,411.82. In our Nicolay money market account, $452,221.25. In our capital, Credit union, I guess we call it a money money market. It's more like kind of like a CD. Fifty thousand, two sixty two and twelve cents. In the ISDA annuity, one hundred thousand seven hundred eighty nine dollars forty nine cents. Grand total, six hundred eighteen thousand. $684.68. Chief Olson gave his, his chief's report. He reported nine fire calls. Of those nine fire calls, only two were actually quote unquote fire calls. The rest were 
natural gas line was cut, um, a false fire alarm, vehicle accident in, uh, in Forestville, um, missing bow hunter, um, single car rollover, uh, a lift assist, you know, so you know, basically our, our true fire calls are not really fire calls anymore. And 22 EMR calls, 22. Mm. 22. Those seem to have risen lately. Um, the only explanation is they could they, they give is everybody last year stayed home with the cold. And now it seems like everybody's out and about doing stuff. And I mean, <laughs> it seems like they call for every, everything. So um, he also reported Chief Olson did file for a Leary Fire Foundation grant, and we did not make it pass to the next round, which is kind of a bummer because we were hoping to put that twenty five thousand towards towards air packs, mm -hmm. and uh, so we we so we're looking for a grant writer. If anybody has any leads, Julie Smelzer. <laughs> Julie, like, is in Buck's sister, sister. Like, like Joan Gressel's sister, Julie. Yeah, Julie Smelzer. She works for Econ Door County Economic Development Corporation. And she is a grant writer. Professional grant writer. And she is a professional grant writer. Okay. She uh, She's hungry. She, <laughs> she visited us with last last Friday to talk about what's coming. She wrote an article about Forceville, things happening in Forceville mm -hmm. for the Smithsonian. Mm -hmm. and, I saw that, yeah. and did you hear that in the news today? Yeah, okay. She's the one that did that. Okay. She's the one that did the write-up on that initially. Yeah, and, uh, right. and uh, so she is looking for opportunities uh, to enhance communities, getting more businesses, enhance them. That, and I would be uh, a good contact. Absolutely. Great pick. I remember her from school. I think she's just a couple year, years older than me. More community brings more people, more people. Tourism brings more accidents. You know. and more accidents, but more calls. That's right. The uh, safety committee, which encompasses the sheriff's department, the EMS department, and the 911 emergency call services center, uh, call center. Uh, that meeting was held last Tuesday, and if you ever want to see how many all the calls are, that, that is in the agenda. Mm. And if you can go into the Door County uh, website, go to the agenda, and go to the public safety is the title of that committee, public safety. And it's just what you're saying, Lauren, uh, the falls are way up, like 40%. And it's how many times that there's two ambulances in Door County on the road at the same time. Right. That's that's what responding to yeah, yeah responding yeah. calls and when uh, when the Brussels ambulance goes out, they bring an ambulance from the city mm -hmm. to the west side mm -hmm. and, and staging it. When uh, and also if the northern ambulance if the one ambulance goes north, then they bring one from Sister Bay down to downtown. So uh, it's uh, they're they're, they're those, those people. I got a lot of respect for the EMS department. They really uh, hustling this here. Um, next item, we got an update from the vehicle committee on the progress of specking out the next truck, the next mm -hmm. pumper. We got different uh, different reports on uh, who they met with, Pierce and um, and the other two companies. They're hoping to get some prices kind of nailed down by December. But there's also a lot of lot of talk on the board about, you know, why is Casco picking up trucks for three hundred eighty-five to four hundred thousand, and now we're talking seven hundred thousand. So there's there's a lot of mm -hmm. oh, they, I guess that, that, that right. It's all right, 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 right. One of the board members, Bill, Bill had Bill had uh, wrote a report out and uh, printed off on different how much different options are that manual valves versus electric valves, um, air horn cord versus electric push button cord, you know, all that all that stuff kind of seems like to add up, right? Yes, it does. Which hasn't been under the microscope at all by the board for every truck that's been purchased till till looks like till starting now. So we're uh, trying to hold cool. hold all parties accountable, you know. Nice to have all the bells and whistles. 
if you have the money. Yeah, it looks pretty. Mm -hmm. right? If you have the money. If you have, <laughs> if you have the money. So, yeah. Okay, so speaking of that, um, we have 618,000 total in our coffers. Mm -hmm. This truck, if they spec it out the way they want, could be 700,000. What has the town done to budget for this? Because you, you wanted uh, replacement schedules in the past, or you've got replacement we schedules. Asked for that, yes. And you've, you've, you've had, you have one yes, hand, yes, you know. Yes. Um, has the town done anything, or is the town planning on? We got to pay for this truck if it comes in. How do we come to you for? Do we look for loans? Is there loans available to the towns association? Is there? I mean, have you done any brainstorming on how if we need extra money to pay the bill? Yeah, that's what we have to. We have to have a meeting for the town. All the four towns get together. You know, the four chairs would have to get together and decide what. What's necessary to do, and yes, each town could borrow money for that. That's that's true. Uh, I don't think the fire department can borrow money, can they? No. They have in the past. They have in the past. I believe they have in the past. Right? Well, they, right? Yeah. They, they they've do. got they secured their own loan. They yeah. secured, really? Okay. Okay. Before my day. Yeah. Okay. I've been hearing stories about because that's that was the last truck we paid off when when I got on the board. Okay. The truck. <laughs> so that is so that is you an can option, go through the bank as an option. But I remember, um, I remember going to one of our WT meetings, um, and they talked about other ways of getting money instead of borrowing from the bank. There's other low cost or low interest rates mm -hmm. you can get through, like um, the library system. Well, that's yeah, that's and that was, well, that's the, the land trust, right? Yeah. And, and, that's, and is that's not open, I don't think, right. to fire boards, but it is open to municipalities, municipalities right? So that would be an option. I'm, I'm thinking that we would, again, like you said, mm -hmm. the chairs would have to get there together and, and talk about it. But I also know, like, like in the case of like a truck for the for the um, going through the bank, the last time we did that, we went through, um, I think it was Bank of Luxembourg, if I recall. What was it Bailey? I don't think it was Bailey. I yeah, thought it was Bank of Luxembourg. But it or, or it was the other one that well, which is now Nicolay or whatever it is. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it was Bailey Bank. Oh yeah, yeah. That is now Nicolay. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, so that yeah. yeah, that's the same bank. Yeah. Right. Um, but it, it, it memory doesn't serve me too well, but yeah, that's what they did. And the interest rate on that wasn't that bad at the time. I, I'm not sure what they would do now. So the last time I checked, Jason, is that the local banks were less expensive than the state mm -hmm. yeah. program. The state program. Yeah. yeah, they gave you better, uh, yeah, better rate. Yeah, and we'd be well, borrowing within the within. Yeah, when we when we checked rate. the last time, we could get a better rate at the bank, local bank. Right. right. So that's what we have to cross that bridge when we get to that one more. Because there's two ways. Well, there's different payment plans for paying for the truck. There's mm -hmm. paying, there's paying for the chassis. Is paying prepaying for part of it, then there's mm -hmm. you know when it's half done, when it's all the way done. So there's different stages of paying for a truck. Another reason I ask is we are the only fire department in the county that does not have an, an exhaust system, mm -hmm. which was ninety thousand two years ago. Mm -hmm. Don't fit both stages. Wasn't that becoming a mandate by the state to put that exhaust in? Well, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming you know, down it, the road. Mandated yeah. by the state or by OSHA yeah. or whatever. Yeah. It's going it's to be someday, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, they're going to say you have a year or 18 months to get it in. So, and that, you say it was 90,000 and things have gone up. So now we're, you know, could easily say it could be pushing 100,000. If you can get your firm prices on that, it's a little on a scary situation we got going on right now. The county just ordered two trucks with plow equipment in September. By the time it was approved by the county board to when they said, okay, go, that was about a two week period. The steel for the yeah. plows went up $30,000 $30, just for two items, mm -hmm. 15,000 a piece. Mm -hmm. Now, whether it's gonna come down or not, I have no idea, but it was- that's Right, you know, there's an exhaust system that's all ductwork and fans yeah, and, yeah. and, and, so and that's, whatever. That's, so that's all steel and, and everything. So I imagine that price that, that Hundred thousand could be lower. Yeah. Yeah. That's where we're going to recovery money should have, you know, and the fire department could have probably looked into that back at the time, but it's kind of past that time. But though we had that would be 
we that started we started running a grant for it right. to wash and dryer yeah wash and, dryer. and we then we showed it in our, in our last budget mm -hmm. for the for the grant but that mm -hmm. uh the time frame for the grant fell through our grant mm -hmm. writer mm -hmm. is on hiata hiatus so um this maybe this julie can help us out with that yeah uh, from there if you know her that'd be great door county mm -hmm. cannot she's she's a relatively a uh, very experienced lady All righty, let's see what else we got. Um, oh, the North Station. North Station blacktop has been removed and the first two inches of blacktop was laid today. Mm. So that's going and the second two inches is going on tomorrow. Mm. So the county is really, uh, really on the ball with that. And I did misquote you and I was going to look up the right number. I had said 45,000. It's, it's 38 and a half thousand. So, somewhere's, I quoted you the, long, the wrong price last month. For the for the, black, for the black top, right? So I was going to look that up before I left, but then all of a sudden the guys called and said, can we get the fire trucks out first thing tomorrow morning so that we can do the, the second layer? And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, <laughs> the wife calls and- But they were talking time. about doing a black top for quite some time, weren't they? Yeah. Like a couple of years. I think one year, I think you guys got an estimate it was like 45,000, wasn't it? And then now this new, this new one you got in, it's actually came in less. A little bit so, less for now, okay. yeah. You know, there's a little bit of culvert work up on the road, but that that's that's minor. Okay. So, um, future items exhaust uh, that that should be that should be all I have. Good. Okay. I kind of went off on my <laughs> I skipped it all that notes <laughs> a little bit. So does uh, seem to be working. Everything working pretty good. This September, the whole organization now? Seems to. I uh, talked to Rich Olson. He said that things have calmed down with mm, okay. the personnel a little bit. He's still meeting with the firemen individually to talk things through. Okay. And, um, it's it's calmed down quite a bit. There's okay. still still some. Mm -hmm. So we're hoping an ongoing process. It takes time. Mm -hmm. Right. Good. So we're hoping that, uh, you know, eventually just all goes back to the way it was. Yeah, but but in, insight from young guys and stuff is is you know invaluable and, and mm -hmm. from from the older gentleman is just valuable also so mm -hmm. valuable also so um, just got to work together. All right. Yeah. Very good. Well, thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Thank you for uh, reappointing me. Keep keep the <laughs> don't keep the fires burning. No, keep them all. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Keep doing a good job. Yeah. Very good. Okay, moving on to QuickBooks. I guess uh, we have heard uh, that QuickBooks is still being <clears throat> not as quick as we thought. Huh. Uh, so, <laughs> understatement. <laughs> so, uh, you feel that by disconnecting the bank from your organization, from the, being online, I, I think so. We're having them automatically post. post yes, account. they're not going to post. Because Ruth just found uh, $92 that when the, they, they, that was a big error. No, it was like 10,000. Yeah. yeah. Was two two checks. checks. Two checks. And the other, the one on the bottom here, I have some. If they're. So if you're putting that into the single system yourself, you know yeah, what's there. Yeah, yeah. the bottom one. The but bottom we still check have to try to figure out to make sure was entered. We, how we get back to our right bed yeah, day. I wrote the check out and it cleared on this day. And that's. That's when it was posted. Yes. This one was deleted. Uh -huh. And these two posted twice. So we were, it, it wasn't taken out twice at the bank. It was posted in our records. Twice. In our records. Yeah. Yes. 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 So if you're yeah, doing, for you. doing that posting yourself, you won't have that issue. Right. Right. Well, that bothers me. Mm -hmm. The bank itself would have caused that. Mm -hmm. Was well, because I, can I, it's because yeah. we didn't understand what the bank, how the bank was working with us. Right. I mean, we were right. doing it the way we always, always did. did. Yeah, mm -hmm. just enter and, the check. Enter and the if they would, if and... somebody would have told us that, and maybe they did, and it was, and there was just so much thrown at us that well, I we were didn't trying, listen. We were trying to, to get so many things understood uh -huh. at the time that yes. I can see where that, where that could have happened. You know, but, but, you know, you try to put your, I mean, I don't transfer the money until usually the day of the meeting mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I leave it in as much wherever we get the most interest. Right. 
And by doing that, I was entering it in so it was in our, so you could show it on our report. On our report. Mm -hmm. But right. then right. when I come to reconcile the next month, you could, well, just then just I had two. One. And if you didn't know which one to pick, then you pick the wrong one. Well, then yeah. you go back and you try to delete one. And then you have a mess because the one won't delete because it was already reconciled. And now you screwed yeah. up your bank, yeah. your, your balance yeah. and your bank. Your, your okay. QuickBooks. But it would be that, see now, in a situation like that, that's where a journal entry would come in. You can journal entry to reverse the one that's incorrect. Right, you right. In a journal entry, cite what you're doing and why you're doing it. And that so becomes maybe that's part why of some record. of them is in there. So but instead of trying only, to don't go back to it. the way we used, you know, like you said. Yeah. It well, I understand easier. that, but you're working in a single book. Mm -hmm. Well, Dino you know, would be giving me the bank deposit, the statements, so I can, you know, double check you, you know, make sure my stuff comes out too. <clears throat> but I mean, that's that's mm -hmm. when you have those kinds book. of entries that you can't reconcile, mm -hmm. or they've been duplicated for whatever reason. Mm -hmm then you have to make a journal entry. I mean, that's standard accounting practice. Right, right. You take a journal entry to reverse right. the incorrect entry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then that'll remove that right. from the balance. Mm -hmm. So oh, you, know, you, you really thing. have to pick through those uh -huh. pieces yeah. to understand that. She did talk about that. Aaron uh, up at Quantum spoke to that, that they mm -hmm. first went in there. And I have not been a party to some of the other discussions since then, mm -hmm. but um, I'm, I'm sure that that's the process because I, I've dealt with that multiple mm -hmm. times in the past mm -hmm. with other organizations, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, and journal entry is, is nothing to be afraid of, but you mm -hmm. can't do everything through journal entries. Mm -hmm. I've had organizations that have tried to do everything through journal entry because they couldn't figure out what it was they were doing. Mm -hmm. That's not the purpose of a journal entry. It's You're going town board or town board guest? Town board member, is it? Town board guest or house? Owner? You can go there. And you guess is fast enough. I can tell you yeah. that compared to what I got. <laughs> yeah, it should work. What's your network security? Oh, you need a password? Yeah. Well, here. What did you put it on? Uh, regular town, town board. Oh, town board? Okay, town board. Oh, yeah. Town board don't need anything. No, uh, the guests you do. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Hang on, I'm finding it. Public open. Uh, there it is. That's this one? Yeah. If you're going in this, to the town board connection, board the capital B's and O. And worked on that budget for about five days and I got, See if you got to find it. Guest. You know, that's what I like doing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like it. So then I took all the deposits and I went right down and that was okay. Capital so I B. thought, well, it's going to be in a check. So I went every check step all the way. And all of a sudden I, I see a duplicate one in January and one in June. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking, why, you know? Take a look. It was the oh, same check number. Oh, mm. sorry. And it did those two checks. What did say? Do you allow their pieces? And it was not that the bank did it. It's just that yes. the way it was set up. I don't know. Yeah, and it allowed it. It's like a mirror. Just, uh, a mirror. Yeah, yeah, you should like that. that. So I could not figure it out. So I think it all comes out and came out on my report. And yet it wasn't coming a balancing to what the money was. So. Now, you, we also had a brief discussion, you and I, about you were rounding up on some of these things, but then you had to. Mm -hmm. uh, Just on Medicare, yeah. On yeah. the Medicare thing. Yeah. So you're going to round. Well, it's only eight. So, so this is what it looks like. It shows you all your bank. I wouldn't have to do stuff, it. Right? I just did that one time to get those four So cents it tells you you've got two review stuff. transactions here, you got one review here. So, if, so your review right here is this $19,300. That's, that's back from March. It keeps telling me that I have to confirm that I have to put that in. It's already in there, but it won't go away. You know, so if you go to this one, 
There's two of them in there. Those are the two checks, 92.60 and the 73.70.25. Those are the ones that are shown. This one's from 9.27. This one's 99.24. Those are in there already. We've already reconciled one of them, but these are there. And this one says, this one says there's no category to it. I've put a category on everything that I had. And then you get it in there, and then there's two in there. So then you go and you delete one, well, then it back, shows back up on here again. And if you disconnect from the bank, it, none of that will show, and it won't. It won't bring. It won't bring it back in. Okay. Because what it does is it brings it back in when you. So if you hit. So you refresh uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. So if you hit update, it's going to update all of your records from the bank. Yeah. So, I, I don't know, it's just, then if you go into your, uh, I mark it. So if you see here, I don't know you, so you have a $79,000. Okay, I put that in, that was last month's money that we, that we bar, transferred. transferred from the money market to the checking. But now I got it here, one deposit in, one deposit out. Why would it show up again? I don't. I don't understand you why it's in, trying to put it in. The bank trying to put it in. Yep. But then why would it deposit it back in again? You both did it. You did we, it. And the bank did it. We took them out. You took them out. We took them out. But then all of a sudden, I always end up with a deposit back in. So so it's the same with this one. See, this one's got twenty two thousand. This is twenty two thousand, and then this is twenty two thousand. That's payment again. Same with the nine. 16,900. It's the same, same with this 15,400. I don't There's understand. So many, yeah. They're getting double entered in essence. Yeah, well, double I entered, entered one. Out, yeah. But then the but then when you update the bank, the bank puts in one, but why is it putting a deposit in? Because it's already linked to the Transaction. I mean, the deposit. The, this we're 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 transferring out, not transferring in. And you, if you delete this one, this one goes away. So then, and then, so then it goes back into my transactions. That says it and needs it tries to come to back in. Sell you yeah. and it puts it back in. Yes. Yeah. You can run it without linking it to the bank, right? Yeah, you can. Mm -hmm. Yes. The old system we did. Yeah. Well, again, you can hear you just on you just unlinked. Yeah, but you're both you if you're unlinked from the bank, and you're both seeing what the other did. Yeah, you don't have to both do what the other did. Right, right, right. So what we talked about is her giving me the check stubs again, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I can look at the check stubs against what she did in the computer and make sure it's what, right. And then Dina and giving check. me the bank statements, bank statements. Yes. so that I can. And that's doing an audit. Yeah. And yeah. that to me makes sense. We always, that's the way instead we did it all the time. Instead of having the, yeah. yeah, but you're not, instead of having them automatically doing this reconcile. for you and right. trying to reconcile, you're doing it yourself. You do your own reconciliation. Mm -hmm. yes. And that way you would have both of you looking at the other's work. Mm -hmm. We did that every system. month. I always, at the end of the, you know, we have a meeting and I would check everything off and enter all the deposits and she see all the checks are there. Okay, so we're doing in one system. Right, yes. right, yes, mm -hmm. it'll still be the online, yes. Just I not see using that. The I don't makes, know. Makes sense to me. Yeah, you know? it, it oh, does. Just... But, but the problem is we have to make sure we have the right balance going forward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, somehow we still yeah. have to correct yeah. some of this yeah. stuff, yeah. but maybe yeah. if we delete this out that got this double transition, not connected to the bank, our system Correct. will go back. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what I'm guessing is going to happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So who do you contact or how do you disconnect from the bank? You should be able to do it just online in here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You just well, there's a little button that you can disconnect it. We'll find out next month. Yeah. Uh, I hope it goes a lot uh, it's like, else it's like those old cereals you used to listen to on the radio. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, right. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the <laughs> seminar and, and um, that Kerber, the lady from Kerber Rose was going to oh. talk about the different computer programs. And one guy says, I have one question. Why do they call it QuickBooks when there's nothing quick about it? Mm. <laughs> oh. uh, me too. 
Well, we got quite a bit of information at the uh, had a very good conference this time. There's yes, only yes, a couple agree. of sessions that were too much, but one of them sort of scares us a little bit because that we have to get more spear in our correspondence and everything. So Larry has already tackled it already. And so it's y.gov is the thing. Rather than going .com, the government is a lot more secure than our little system. So Larry, what have you found out so far? Right. I talked with a number of people since the uh, conference. Uh, I, in one of the sessions, uh, I was aware or made aware of the fact that um, the Wisconsin Department, oh, Wisconsin Elections Commission really is the one driving this. And they basically went to the clerks and said, if you don't have a .y.gov or a .gov domain name on your email, we aren't going to take any information from you. We are considering you non-secure and we're not going to let you into the system. And you got that back in August, mm -hmm. that email. Yes. Then uh, they put this um, conference booklet together and then spelled out this letter that was dated in August. That's in this booklet on page 17. Yep. And then it went on uh, with all the explanations and then it says that you also can go and get a .gov from the federal uh, system without the .wi, which is for Wisconsin only. However, uh, the .gov domain is registered uh, through the uh, federal government, not the local government. I then contacted the Department of Administration. First of all, I, just, I contacted, when I realized how those structures were working, I contacted the Department of Administration because they are the ones who run the computer systems and the security system, and they are the registrar, if you will, for the .wi.gov, Department of Administration. They will not service any clerks directly because that's being driven through the Department of, of, of Wisconsin Elections Commission. I then contacted Don Solsky, uh, and she uh, talked to me on the morning of whenever it was here, the 14th. And thanks for your call regarding the process. Here's some information related to it. And this is what you can do. And she sent me a bunch of information on that. In addition, I got some other stuff from the Department of Military Affairs with regard to cybersecurity threats. Lots of stuff. Well, the thing is, is that now we're getting threats. They started the federal government and the state, and now the local governments. Mm -hmm. Now they're going after local governments. So that's exactly. why it's really important. Yeah. And that's why you're getting things like this yeah. in the mail. Uh, basically, this is from uh, a service provider. Uh, why you need to have that? And basically, they want to sell you services. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I went a little further. I said, uh, okay, if I were to go and get a .gov, .wi, .gov um, domain from uh, the Wisconsin Elections Commission, how then will that interact with our rack space? Because we have our own mail provider. We're not running. Uh, uh, that's just something that we did on our own. I talked with the folks from Rackspace and they said, you can have two domain names. We, right now we have forestvilletown.com. That's a domain name. Mm -hmm. We can get, a, I believe we can get the forestvilletown.wi.gov through the elections commission. And then Rackspace will work with me through the control panel that I then can set that up as another domain for this town. It would then change our email address to clerk, chair, treasurer at forestvilletown.wi.gov, mm -hmm. primarily for your outgoing email. We would still retain the forestvilletown.com as an alias, 
So anybody who had the force clerk at forcefulcom.com could send you that email to that .com address. It's an alias that'll come into the .gov and that would then come to your new mailbox or your new address in your mailbox. All we'd have to do is reconfigure um, you know, how you would log in. We just, we'd have a different name. I asked about, we have a couple of years worth of archive. We have over 20,000 messages that are archived that we had kept in, in the event we get a FOIA request. Mm -hmm. There's a conversion process to convert all of the old stuff into the new domain so that we don't lose any of our history under the .com addresses. If I can accomplish that in under uh, seven days, there's no cost to us. They, Rackspace will migrate all of that information over that period of time, but I have to work with them in order to do that. I got to get MX records. There's, and, and you, that's some of the stuff you heard in your session, in your elections mm -hmm. training session. Uh, and it's spelled out in here what you can do. So I said, well, okay. If in the event we can't get the migration done within that time frame, the most we'd end up having to spend is about $30 over the, if we go beyond that seven day window. So to me, that isn't a difficult task. But then Ruth also got an email, a hey.gov. Mm -hmm. And she thought it was a scam. <laughs> I just said, I said, no, I said, I thought this is for Larry. I just said that. <laughs> and so she sent it to me because it's not a scam. And you're all excited. <laughs> I am excited. <laughs> and the reason I'm excited is this. Uh, Dustin Overbed, who is the guy who owns Town Web Design, mm -hmm. um, He's married to somebody, and they live in Romania, mm -hmm. but he's also bought uh, one of Ellsworth's old houses up on Bayshore Drive. And that's where he's operating out of right now. Talk to him today. Uh, and he's put together um, a thing called Hey Gov. And what this does is it moves into um, a complete digital process so that it would add to your website um, digital forms. So we have only a handful of forms. We've got the rental agreement, we've got the checklist and that sort of thing. There's a liquor licenses, there's dog licenses, there's culvert permits. We only have a handful of these things. And the process is that they would take, if we were to get this .gov addition to our existing website, uh, they would add these functions automatically to our existing website so that you would get everything just through electronically. And people could do it on a tablet, they could do it on their telephone, uh, on, a web, on a computer, okay. or whatever. Back up, what, we have those documents on our website right now. Right, they're PDF forms they have to print out, fill out, and then Mail scan it. Or right. mail it or yeah, scan it and mail it. So by going to this, you have you can fill them out right on the electronically, electronically, and mail them. Send them rather. No, they you know, come just, right back to us. They they come right into your email. But the problem is you have to make a payment with it. So how does that? Exactly. Work? Okay. There is. Uh, they would also have um, a credit card accepting credit cards on a. Point of sale terminal, a little, oh, little yeah, there, PayPal or, you, or Venmo, or Venmo, or a credit card, or whatever. You, just, you know, you they, if they came to your house, you could just say here. They'd slip this thing in here, and it would record it. There's always a fee when you're processing mm -hmm. credit cards. That fee is added to the person's bill, not to the town's bill. Yeah. If we're that's what a lot of people are doing now. Right. And so we don't have to deal with, okay, now we pay percent per transaction. It's just automatically added to whoever, if they chose to do it that way, fine. If they wanted to send in a check, they can still send in a check. But this thing would then put it all on a digital basis as opposed to, uh, you know, what we're now doing with paper and all the rest of it. This is the, the, the um, information that 
I got from him today. And I asked him, I said, well, this is all sounds real nice, but mm -hmm. what's this thing gonna cost? Mm -hmm. Now, there's one other piece that I didn't share with him. There's an opinion from Dempsey Law's 11 page document. And basically what it says is a, if a local government purchases administrative digitization services from this, from hey.gov, eligible expenditure under the American Rescue Plan Act, uh, coronavirus state and local fiscal recovery funds. Yes, it provides at least two methods for the services to provide that money. And then it goes into an explanation of why. Basically, you're responding to uh, you're, you're responding to people and you're able to handle transactions without person-to-person -person contact. Um, and that then means that you're, you're doing something that's under the auspices of this American recovery plan. I said, well, there's a cost with this. You're not talking about doing something for nothing. And basically here's how the costs are spread. There's, because we were an early adopter, a founding member for Town Web on getting our website up, I think Sevastopol was first. Yep. And then we went on shortly there. Well, we were probably probably the third. Third one. or fourth, yeah, something yeah. like that. To, to take and enhance our existing web presence with these e or, or hey.gov functions, um, there's a $1,000 uh, setup fee if we signed a contract by December 1st, that's waived. Uh, if he digitizes our documents, there's a thousand dollar fee for that. That too is waived. Hmm. Then there's a point of sale terminal, which is $300, which is also waived. So we don't get charged for all of the services to establish it. I said, okay, fine. If that's the case, you've done that. What does this thing cost? It costs $99 a month on top of our existing bill. 700, 700 and some dollars a year. Mm -hmm. I said, whoa, I, that's, that's significant. Mm -hmm. That's $1,000 a month. He said, well, if you buy it by the year, uh, you get a 10% discount. And there are three year, um, a three-year contract. So it would be $3,207.60. Okay. And if that was signed for by December 1st, what are you doing? A fly? It's like half dead and it keeps flying on my head. Right. So <laughs> it would give you, uh, that would give you three years of funding qualified under these uh, America Road to Recovery yeah. Act. And that would then mean from 21 to 22 to 23 to 24, it would be the end of the third year, you would then renew for another three years. And because it would be expended in 2024, you would still get that funding through the American Recovery Plan. That's to be paid for. Yeah. So therefore you would, it probably end up costing you $6,500 and you'd have six years of services. Nice. I guess my question here though, how many forms do we get? Uh, I don't know. Not very many. Well, there's more to it than that. There, this, that's right now. Yeah. That's what we now have. Yeah. The other piece of this is it also provides the ability to take, uh, and I gotta stop something here. Ron, I can't. Um, it also provides the ability in January to have your calendar available and let people self schedule your calendar. Now, what we would have to do is known uh, users of the hall for town hall rental, known users of the hall, your nonprofits, the Boy Scouts, the VFW, whomever, as on a regular routine schedule, just have to have those put into our calendar. Once they're online, then Somebody who wanted to rent the town hall could go online and see it's open. Mm -hmm. Punk say, I would like to do this, mm -hmm. fill out the information, send you the deposit money, do whatever, all online and it's self service. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.
any other uh, things that we would do, uh, let's say somewhere along the line, we decide there's going to be a fee that we're going to charge as a byproduct of some other ordinance or whatever we do. We just add that digitized document to the system. So right now, this is the way a lot of businesses are operating. And it's an opportunity for us, again, to get in on the ground floor mm -hmm. and to go after it. Now, I would like to have him do a demonstration for us online uh, at our next month's meeting. It will be, yeah. And in the meantime, I would pursue, if you want me to, getting the dot wi.gov no, that, stuff. That's not going to cost us at, at most 30 bucks. Yeah, that's 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 what we got to that's that's a no-brainer. Yeah, that's no brainer. It's almost mandatory. Exactly. Yeah. And I would like to arrange to have a demonstration or have Dustin himself come in here yeah. and show us. Because uh, I've so he's actually that. here. Oh yeah, he's in Sturgeon Bay. Oh. So if he comes the next month, that's November's meeting. Right. So then we could then make a decision to then try to meet the date for December 1st before that. We all we have to do is sign contract. I've got the contract on okay. my computer. Good. And the contract is online. Because that's the way it should be. Well, it is. Well, I mean, because like, like even like with my business, I do everything point of sale on my phone. Yeah. Right. I think you run right through my phone. We would have. I can still question if there's a fee. Usually, there's fees on all our permits, and yeah, two things: how do we handle the money, and do we really need it because we don't have that much business? I understand we don't have that yeah, much yeah, business. Yeah. So that's, that's two things. Is it, is but it, but the question, to from my perspective, is no, we don't have that much. We've got very few forms, very few. very few submissions that have to be made, mm -hmm. but it positions the town. At least, and it's paid for by the federal government money <laughs> for six years. <laughs> for six years. Now, we, after the fact, said on the other recovery funds, the CARES Act, we didn't do what we might well have done. Yes, we got this. Yes, we've got the screens. Yes, we've got Zoom. We've got the meeting owl. We've got a lot of stuff, but we left about half of it on the table. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking if this is actually possible. We we'll position the next town board down the road five, six years from now. Mm -hmm. They've got the tools because yeah. that's where it's going to be. Right. Cool. So, okay. Well, I, I, think I will we're... continue to pursue that and invite Dustin. Very good. Very good. All right. I realize it's a lot of stuff, but it is. Yeah. I need to back up a little bit. Um, when I talked to LGIP um, to find out how much money I had to leave in that account, they said I can take it down to zero if I want to, and it still stays open. Oh. But she asked me if we would look into getting our check a different. Right now, they send us a check through the mail. She said the mail has been it's so getting slow. Worse. It's getting, getting worse. worse. She said that people are complaining. Well, that one took, what, two weeks mm -hmm. to get our check? Mm -hmm. She says talk to your bank and find out if they, you know, if you can do a wire transfer into it. So I talked to Bank of Luxembourg. What are they charged? Twenty-five dollars a wire. Mm -hmm. So I don't know what. I don't know if it's something we want to do or if it's something we just wait for the snail mail to bring our. How many checks in a year? It looks. It's usually this time of year when I have yeah, to pull yeah. out. So I would say it's not even probably not even six because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I usually can use all the. Um, property tax money pulling us through mm -hmm. until we get to this time of year right. when everything is paid and used up in August or whatever. And I think that's another question that I could ask, Dustin. If we were to go with this .gov world, would that be a funds transfer directly into our account that then LGIP could use? They said this is the only one they have available right now. Oh. LGIP. They only can wire money to a bank right now. They don't have any other options. That's it? That's it. It's a wire transfer. Mm -hmm. And you wire, you, you have to get, you ask for a check, how often? Well, once a month, it's only once a month, but and it's not every month. So six, 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 seven, yeah, eight. six at the very most <clears throat> that we transfer money. And at $25 of each right. for wire transfer. So 150 bucks. 
So I told him I would bring it up at the meeting tonight and get back to her and let her know. But wire transfer know. from LGIP to our bank to the bank directly, instantaneous, secure. How many hours are yeah. they talking about when you transfer? If I transfer, it's usually well, like we're gonna probably pay most of the highway bill out of that, so it'd be a hundred and forty thousand. So you're trying you yeah. transfer over fifty thousand at a time. Last last month was a hundred thousand mm -hmm. that we pulled with a check. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, then then if you're transferring that much money, if it's smaller amounts, no, but if you're transferring that much money. It's not, it's usually 50 or more when I transfer yeah, okay. it. And it's still the right way to go, I think, wire yeah, and wire. In this day and age. If yeah. that's the only thing that, they, that they're working with. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing they have. He said. LGIP wire transfer for a $25 fee. You're not trying to get a check in the mail. Right. Yeah. It used to be about 10 for a pound. Yeah. Oh, that to me. And it, and the check used to come like within that day or two. Well, and yeah. That we had to hold checks last time because mm -hmm. the check. Did well, not look come. what's happening with the postal system. Yeah. Mm -hmm. five coming out of New York. Is that where they're from? I don't really know. I think I think that's a usually five days minimum. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what to make the decision. Yeah. Okay. That's yours. Yeah. Okay, moving on to roads. Okay, well, we've got a lot of things happening in roads. First thing happening in roads is that next year we will get a little bit more money, and the year after we'll get a little bit more money, and the year after we'll get a little bit more money. That's the, one of the big things down Wisconsin Town the Association did some politicking and got us more money. So next year we'll get $122,226.79 hmm. for our estimate. So uh, that's uh, what we did. Now, on October 1st, we did the road review, and Jason, Ruth was doing. Ruth was doing. Uh, Larry, Ruth was doing budgets, and I was doing roads today. Here's our documentation. Uh, why this documentation is sort of important? It gives you a complete history of your roads when they were done, when was the last time they were updated, and so they all got updated with a new phaser rating as of today. And uh, and you can see when the year when they were resurfaced, some of them go back to 1999, and uh, some of them. Uh, Larry and uh, Jason on the back two pages go back to the. Oh, that's I see the small pages. Yeah, go back to the small pages. This is what the work we have done this year, and how I record that is that when I request the work to be done by the county, I keep a copy, you know, a hard copy, make a print, mm -hmm. and put it in my file. And then now today I went back to my file and pulled out all the little things I requested. Uh, the only thing that's not on here are culverts. And I don't see any code last year, the year before, or this year that we talk about culverts. So uh, that's the only thing. If, if you're perusing this in the future, and next, I'm not going to be mailing this until later on this week. But if you see something that I missed, uh, let me know. But uh, keep looking at yep. those. Oh. Yeah, I was just oh, okay. admiring the. Uh, <laughs> I was looking at with the term, 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 this is here for your record. We have to do this every two years. It's, uh, they have to update this to mandatory every two years. Um, um, and you put the new ratings in here. And the new ratings are. We in. lowered some of them. Right. We lowered a few. Yes, we lowered a few. Yeah. Yeah. You can see that. Uh, well, in fact, our roads are are pretty good shape, really. Uh, I wish we had a lot more money. And I'll go through that next. Yeah. Yeah. So. That's for your information. Um, takes a little while for you to figure out what we're talking about there, but it, the, the type of the road, it's a black top. I don't, you don't have that key, I guess. And that's a little bit. Uh, yeah, those are the. You know, type 70, 65? What is yeah, but after asphalt is a type 70 and 65, and the gravel, gravel's uh, 35. Hmm. Right. Yeah. That makes sense. And right now, I will be putting in a request for local road improvements for three roads, which we talked about, which is West Center, 
old elm and old figure. I'll be putting in road request for that. Uh, we should have received the, the last two months, we should we receive the bills from the highway department and the Salona Road, which we finished off. Uh, we, I, my calculation is that it cost us $245,356.74. The quote that we received was $288,500. So they, they came in under, under what, what the quote was, was that my calculations. Mm -hmm. uh, Dina, you have to bill S and S for sixteen hundred eighty-six dollars and six cents. We repaid that. You paid that already. No, it's okay. That's yep. good. That's in the. That yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, uh, I think you got a break because the original quote was yeah, thirty-five it eight. It was. And I think the, some of the gravel, the work that they did before, uh, didn't get charged. They just they just charged the. Black cutting top, and black topping. Okay. We exam. We watched that. We didn't do it, uh, Randy. Did uh, Randy uh, the board watched and your trucks are using that? Yes, they're using yes. that there. Uh, we are going to be shouldering Mill Road on the east side, and we will be using not gravel but regrinding material, the blacktop that you grind up. That's what they'll try and get down yet this year. Okay, there's this try and firm that. that up a little bit yeah. on the shoulder. Yep. Okay. Uh, Niles Road was the other one we did, and that quote was around seventeen thousand. And according to my calculations, it came in a little over fifteen thousand. So, our our uh, uh, our work is coming in. Uh, we spent a lot of money on Mill Road. We spent uh, we spent almost twelve thousand dollars on no eleven thousand dollars on Mill Road, just between the the culverts and the shouldering and the traffic control and that stuff is what we did uh, on that. And Mill Road. So those were my little comments on what's going on uh, on the roads road deal. Uh, let's see what else I got. Uh, yeah, I said I told you about West Center and Old Elm and Old Creek, the ones that I'll be putting in. Also on our road review, we looked at trees, dead trees, lots of them. And here's what we found. Lots of dead trees. Who takes trees down now? That's why I'm bringing this to your attention. Okay. <laughs> I have one in my back. There it needs to go now. <laughs> That's why I'm bringing this to attention. We don't have, uh, we know Mark Krieger is, uh, everybody got one? Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mark Krieger uh, does some, and uh, I haven't contacted him yet, but uh, Anschutz Road, we have, that's a narrow road to begin with. We've got several dead ash trees on both sides of the road that need to come down. Oh, that, yeah, that's the real bad one yeah, up there. Yeah, yeah, So I, I'm passing this off to you. If you know anybody that does this work, uh, I don't know if Nick Eaker does this work anymore. Ruth, you gave me one person. Yeah, Jim Petrina. Oh, Jimmy. And what is that company they call? JB. J JB. Oh, that's the one. Tree service on, on highway. highway. On highway. Oh, on yeah. highway. That's my nephew. Yeah. He put a big operation in there. Mm -hmm. He's got like thing. all the stone and everything there? No, no. No, that's not the no, same. No, no. No. That's the road, the new building that went up. He said that. The building on the north JB's, side of the road. He said that pole shed and there's a lot of. A blue and white building. Yeah. Blue roof. Mm -hmm. So like piles of sawdust there too and stuff. Oh, oh there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there. Chips. Yeah. So. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh. He takes trees down and he's got all the equipment. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you if you get them on somebody like you, you'll need somebody with a they good bunch have... of equipment because oh, yeah. that like the entry oh, stuff. Big stuff. Big stuff in there. So but but same token, if if so, uh, Citizens want to take the tree down and to keep the wood. That's fine, you know. Like, yeah. And, and if they're if they're if they're well, we have a lot of them. So if you are if somebody contacts you and say, hey, there's a dead tree there, well, if you want to cut it down, fine. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And some people, yeah. yeah. But yeah. some of them we're going to have to take down yeah. because yeah. they're the wires too. Well, they're in the that. right of way and they're overhanging the road. Mm -hmm. What's that one we were Ryan and I were looking at the road and you were looking at the tree. Oh, that's on um... Maplewood. Wilkie Road. Wilkie Road. Wilkie Road, yeah. Yes. Yeah, a, and we're we're looking at the surfers, we're looking at this, that, and the other thing. And Jason said, Yeah, that's look terrible. At that. <laughs> oh, oh. Yeah, that was and that's some bad ones. There it is. 
So uh, that's where that's that's our winter project. Uh, okay. And uh, we have to get if we don't get people who want to take them down for the wood, then we're going to have to look and see what we've got in the way of funds and what we can hire. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, that's uh, exactly right. It's very uh, when we had. When Ben used to take the trees down, he usually had somebody that wanted the wood. Like when we took the trees down here last fall, right. them, that yeah. wood disappeared. He ground up the branches and then let the four foot sections, and all of a sudden they were gone. And uh, that, and that's that's great because that's just less costly to do that. Right. Exactly. And, uh, so, okay. Anything. Uh, and uh, even on uh, Geyer Road, there's some trees that are starting to do this mm -hmm. on the road. So. Uh, watch them. I wonder if you could, if you cut, even if you cut the trees down, if you could put it on like Facebook or mm -hmm. something that say free wood on this this road, or people would probably come and grab them. Yeah, well, we got some free wood at Brookhauser Cemetery, and they still haven't grabbed it yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really? It's going to be disappearing one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do we have a oh, that person? Yeah, that I, know a person. <laughs> I know a person who wants it. It's, it's, here. it's a little bit old to go get it. So I'll pick it up for you. Are you trying to get it? Yeah. It was <laughs> okay. 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 Now we're going to pay bills next, huh? Yep. Okay. So paying our bills is. I had that figured out. I thought it was like the twentieth. Page two, I believe it is. September Yep, September twentieth, twenty first. Twenty first. Okay, yeah. Let's hide the date one second. Lawn care, I see it's still, we're still cutting grass yet. Yeah. <clears throat> Not cut mine today. Doing ours tomorrow. I gotta call the guy to call again. <laughs> no, really? I hate doing it. Uh, yeah. When we talk about budget, you'll notice I now here the last couple of checks are not in here because I just did them today after I had the budget all done. The Krieger's Tree Service and Wisconsin Media. Street yeah, light went in there. So the tree service that was on South Carnet, and we had a bunch of trees going around the stop sign in the northeast corner. And then there were seven trees, one almost on the road, but seven trees that were leaning bad, and that cost what four hundred fifty dollars to take that off. And, mm -hmm. and they ground them off, and really nice job. It's, uh, mm -hmm. You don't see them there, but that's what that's what it costs to remove trees. But that was like seven trees. Yeah, the seven trees. But then they weren't. They were only small. Oh, they were only little yeah, ones. They were yeah. trees, but yeah. still, yeah, it costs money. Yeah, a tree taking a tree don't cost mm -hmm. a lot of money. Motion to pay bills. Motion has been made to pay the bills. Uh, just one note on uh, when Ruth and I coming back from the convention, we stopped at Costco, and so I bought products for the town rather than charge it on the mm -hmm. Costco credit card. So that's why my mine might be a little higher rather than the Visa because we can't use it. But, mm -hmm. Yes, you can. I could have used, yeah, that's a Visa card. A Visa it? card. Yeah. I didn't think don't about it. it. I, don't you have to use a Costco card, though? No. No. Oh, Visa okay. card. I could have used that. Could have used that. Okay. Visa, Visa or a debit card. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. If you've got a Costco account. Yeah. you got a Costco oh, card. Yeah. It worked. Yeah, it worked. I didn't even, you know, I didn't even think. I so, thought you maybe had to use her card. You know, I didn't even think about oh. the, uh, that. that they, they, town they, Visa card is a, the only time I use it is <laughs> at Menards and post office to take the water sample. At but you can also use it at Costco if you're getting. Yes, yeah, because yeah. that's, that's what they want. Yeah, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, motion to pay the bills. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. I'll take the first thing by saying aye. 
motion has been carried. Okay, uh, no, uh, just mentioned the announcement is that we do have Wisconsin Towns Association meeting at in Sturgeon Bay on the 18th of November. We mentioned that earlier. It starts at six o'clock and the meeting starts at 6.30. Mr. Ken Pavich will be the guest speaker. It's and on the 18th? On the 18th, yes. November 18th? November 18th, 18th. yeah. Mm -hmm. Are they making us wear masks? Uh, no, it's if, if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear masks. No, 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 that's the, that's the, that's the policy of the county. That's what was the, the um, uh, suggested, strongly suggested to wear masks. Like I said, it's the, there's strong suggestions. Um, that's the only announcement I have. Our next meeting will be on Monday, November 15th. And immediately after the budget hearing, we will have a, that's, this is the annual budget meeting right. where we will have to need a, and that gets approved by the constituents, right? right. We vote on the budget. We have a budget they hearing. Approves the levy. They approve approve, the levy. Yeah. Approves the levy. Yeah. Approves the budget. <laughs> yeah. that's the way it is that's the way it is yeah. this this uh, redistricting my goodness the amount of procedural <laughs> devices that you have to go through and I'll see if I can't get uh, Dustin to get your presentation either online or in person yes yes yeah. and, that, and that's for that yeah that would be for the next meeting right so if there's no further business to conduct at this time, a motion to adjourn would be in order. I make a motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. I and now, second it. And we are adjourned. All those people, I don't think I have that. Well, I got to stop the recording when we finally finish this. All, all, all those in favor of adjourning, please think by saying aye. Right. Aye. Aye. And we will now go into, we are adjourned, and we will now go into our budget. Workshop. I have to, do we record the budget workshop? I do I, not believe. I don't, so. No, no, no. Because no. so, we usually kick everybody out anyway. This, therefore, this recording has now come to an end. You know what? You're right.